Welcome to the Harry Jackson Show. I am your host, Harry Jackson. I am truly excited today because after the news at the top of the hour, as we begin with you, our version, application of these things, we are going to begin to talk to someone that is a real hero of mine, uh, and that is Dr. Tim Clinton, and uh, he is the president of the nearly 50,000-member American Association of Christian Counselors. And boy, do we have an atmosphere in America today where we need a whole lot of counsel and um, help from Jesus. Uh, That definitely is the case. And um, he's written a book, the latest book out of 20, called Breaking Through, When to Give In and When to Push Back. I tell you, we want to hear a little bit more from him. And then number two... Uh, guest that we're going to have uh, in that second segment, who's been on before. He's got a lot of great information. Dr. Carl Benzio, he's an MD, founder of the Lighthouse Network. And so what I think we have here is an overall national general uh, in Dr. Clinton, who is looking at and marshalling the entire army of Christian counselors in this generation and is going to tell us the broad landscape. And then I've got some very specific questions for uh, Dr. Benzio about some parishioners of mine. And um, I'll ask for my congregation uh, some questions on their behalf, as in how crazy is that brother? Is the reverend off his rocker or what? Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, But I will want to ask a question about some trouble signs. And we have an amazing day in which we live where there are people who are living in church who are taking psychotropic drugs as well as going to Bible study. And uh, sometimes we're dealing with how much prayer, how much counsel, and uh, it's difficult to know whether we have the next Sandy Hook Elementary School shooter in our midst or just a troubled, well-meaning individual who can work through their problems, I have no clue how to tell the difference. And obviously, the folks who let their sons and daughters, and most recently the young man with the knife in the Houston University, we don't understand. Well, to the information today. Uh, Joining me in the studio is David Parlett, my co-host, and uh, we'll just go through some of these things together, and I I think we've got an interesting, interesting day. Number one, front page of USA Today for 11-13, today's gun vote, and it's an interesting Senate compromise. Uh, It looks like the two senators uh, have been uh, demonized by some. President Obama's plan to reduce gun violence uh, is out there. And I have absolutely no problem with um, background checks and things of that nature, Pastor Dave. But I still say they're afraid to talk about handgun violence, which is where we have so many uh, murders especially in minority communities. Looks like they don't want to talk about it. And when we want to talk about, can we have more police in the inner city, please? I feel like I'm in the second grade. I'm raising my hand, and the teacher is calling on everybody but me. And I know that a minute or two, the questions are going to be closed out, and we get no more questions. So I'm not so sure. I thank God for this forum that we can bring up the question, but I'm not so sure of where else to go with the question of why are we not talking more about urban violence where more kids are being killed, and why are the answers, such as the NRA's answers, why are they being scoffed at in terms of more policemen, more uh, scrutiny at the high school level, I don't get it. 
What say you about the gun issue, sir? Mm. It is important to be able to do basic background checks, but it's not really dealing with the major issue, the heart problem uh, of why so many murders, uh, particularly amongst kids uh, and even in the African-American community, because we seem to highlight if, if a white person gets shot or killed, uh, that's what we're going to talk about, but yep. not black on black Murder is not an issue that we really feel comfortable talking about because it seems to happen so much more often. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to have more police. We need that. Uh, we need better protection uh, in the schools, particularly with the kids, because they're watching so much violence today. They're being almost, if we could say, hypnotized or, or programmed Program? mm -hmm. to be able to go out uh, without even <laughs> consciously uh, feeling guilt or shame, uh, even as the guy uh, who wanted to stab, I, I heard the news, he simply had been wanting to stab people since being a child, just wanted to stab and kill people. Now, how, how in the world is it, how do you get that as a child in today's world <laughs> unless you're seeing that? Well, I'm glad we got our guests in the second segment. We're going to talk to some of these issues because I don't get it. I don't understand it. And uh, it seems to me, like you say, um, is it really true that black and brown lives are worth less and uh, than white lives? And it seems by the disproportionate lack of attention, society is saying that. And if you want to get involved in this uh, conversation, uh, you can reach us at Bishop Harry, hashtag the Harry Jackson Show, or you can reach out by email to the Harry Jackson Show dot com. And uh, we can respond right on the show to what your questions and concerns are. And I think this gun vote is very germane, and it ties into our second segment, where we'll also talk a little bit more about the sad case of affairs with Rick Warren's son and all that's going on there. Obama eyes debt deadlock. Front page, Washington Compost. Oh, that's Washington Post. Uh, <laughs> uh, it may not only be useful for compost. But I think it's interesting. Um, many, many people wonder whether it's going to do any good or not, whether this is politics, his okay, his showdown at the OK Corral approach earlier didn't work, and his ratings went down. Do you think the president is really sincere? He had a dinner last night, right? Close group. Somebody said that more business and compromise gets done in that very, very close quarters of the actual president's residence than any place else. What do you think, David Parlett? Mm. I think it's still politics as usual. Shame I, on you. Yeah, sorry. We believe that to be true. Well, I, I think until proven otherwise, that's what we've gotten so far. So my prayer is for the president, and I do pray for the president, that his advisors will help him. I, I think he felt that he could get a home run and run all the bases earlier on. Now he's hoping at least to get a double, and I think we really need some honesty and integrity uh, around how the negotiation over the debt is going to go. And I hope that we really take a strong look at what is absolutely necessary in terms of spending. And I believe that uh, we haven't made enough cuts yet. And the balance, as we said yesterday's program, sometimes the balance comes that we need in having a joint vision and an agreement on strategy. And so right now we don't have a joint vision by left and right, conservative and liberal, and we don't have an agreed upon strategy. I mean, one group is saying we're going to spend our way through government creating jobs to a revitalized, resurrected, if you will, economy. Other group says, no, you've got to let the money go not through the government to the community, but rather 
directly into the hands of businesses and entrepreneurs and less taxes, less income, et cetera. Well, story number three, Postal Service bows to pressure in six-day delivery. They say, hey, we're going to still have some delivery on Saturday. Do you think it matters at all, David Parlant? Why, why couldn't they just say, we're going to close on Wednesday, and now we're going to be open on Saturdays? I don't get this transition, why they think this has been pressure. I, I, I think for most of us, we can go to the post office on our off days, which typically are Saturdays, and so we need the Postal Service to be open to us to do business uh, as, as opposed to uh, uh, businesses can do their work week five days a week. We normally only have one day a week when we're uh, off work. Well, I, I think that's a good global kind of uh, approach, strategic approach, meaning if the money is so challenged and we have to keep ourselves out of debt, perhaps targeting or right-sizing is a common word we have now for laying people off and cutting back on economics. Right-sizing the business might be good, uh, but make sure that the Saturday service is not part of what you cut out. So they've not done a great job at management. Uh, It has, my dad used to be a postal worker, by the way, started off there, and uh, he was a mail handler, then he was a mail carrier, but then he got into the adverse actions part of the group, meaning he was a human oh, a personnel manager. And then he came to D.C., worked for Social Security, ended out his government career as a director of personnel for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing right here in D.C. And in the years that he went to that job in the early 70s, that was quite a move for an African-American And um, he often complained about the lack of work ethic in the government services. So uh, I think he would say, you guys work harder, shift the schedule, and let this thing make money. Interesting approach. Also, fourth story of the day, White House budget. It ties back in to seek $235 million to aid mental health. Now, I know they're thinking maybe about mental health with gun control. We're going to talk about mental health in the second section of the program. But I had a question before the show began. Is $235 million enough money to help with all the emotional and mental problems people have? I don't know if there's enough money in the universe for all the mental and emotional problems <laughs> that we have right oh, here goodness. in the United States of America. Not enough money in the universe. That, that's intense. Yeah, and if you think about it, we got 50 states and one district, not counting the protectorates, if you did only uh, dividing this 50 state-wise, not the protectorates you'd come up with a number that is mm, somewhere on about $4.5 million per state for mental health, 12 months a year, year round. Uh, Doesn't sound like a very strong program to me. So there's a tokenism here, a token approach to what I think may be the major problem, what we're feeding into these young people and our society by way of media. Tomorrow, by the way, a premature, perhaps, announcement that I'm excited about, though. Ted Bear is going to be with us, and he gives a Christian movie guide, and he's going to talk to us about some of the movies that are good, that are out. I want to hear what he thinks about Django Unchained. Yeah, and... um, Uh, I know what I think, and uh, it's not that great, but uh, it would be interesting, or Skyfall, the Bond movie, but more broadly, I want to hear what he thinks about the media and the movies contributing to gun violence. 
And right after the break, we're going to be talking with Tim Clendon, the head of the American Association of Christian Counselors and Dr. Carl Benzio. You're listening to the Harry Jackson Show. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great, great segment coming up. If you own a business, then you know the ability to take credit cards is necessary, especially if you use the Internet as part of your storefront. The shocking thing is there are so many credit card processors who don't think twice about taking care of the processing for immoral or objectionable businesses. If they process for your business, that essentially yokes you with those other companies. But there is an alternative. Cornerstone Payment Solutions will not provide credit card processing for those immoral or offensive companies. In fact, they offer businesses like yours a specific processing program that will support AFA by giving an ongoing donation for as long as your credit card processing is done by Cornerstone Payment Systems. Basically, it's processing with a purpose. And all the details are available at 877-356-1208. That's 877-356-1208. Cornerstone Payment Systems is a registered ISO of Harris Bank, Buffalo Grove, Illinois, member FDIC. Suing to save a life. This is a special commentary from the Susan B. Anthony List, named for the suffragette who was proudly pro-life. The circumstances are less than ideal, but the result is worth cheering. A teenage girl in Houston recently became pregnant and her parents urged her to get an abortion. When she refused, they verbally and even physically threatened her. Under immense pressure, the girl sued her parents. Her case was taken on by the Texas Center for Defense of Life and she won. The judge imposed an injunction on the girl's parents, preventing them from threatening or even encouraging her to get an abortion. We applaud the judge, and especially the young woman whose actions saved her baby's life. This is Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the Susan B. Anthony List, inviting you to join us in our battle for life. For more, go online to sba-list.org. This is the Garlow Perspective. Are you astounded at the world's lack of reasoning skills? I was listening to the news one night when the director of education of a particular organization came on advocating what she called safe sex. And she said it was successful 99% of the time. That means it's unsuccessful 1% of the time, resulting in all kinds of harmful impact, including disease. Would you be involved in a car or eat at a restaurant or fly in an airplane if you knew that 1% of the time it was gonna have disastrous results? Would you drive a freeway if you knew that there were 100,000 cars going by each day and 1% of those people wouldn't make it? They'd be killed in a car crash? Of course you wouldn't. But God has a 100% plan. He calls it being pure before marriage and being faithful within marriage. It works all the time. Jim Garlow at GarlowPerspective.com. Welcome back to the Harry Jackson Show. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. I am joined in the studio with my co-host, Dr. David Parlett. And uh, I forget sometimes to give him that kind of credit and to speak in those kinds of stentorian tones. And we're doing that today uh, because we have all these other doctors on the show. So I don't want to leave him out. And believe it or not, I am a doctor as well, except I'm the only one that didn't earn my doctorate. I have about three honorary doctorates. Uh, Yeah, I think they were throwing out some newspaper somewhere, and they put PhD on the paper that they gave me, and it stands for a post-hole digger. Uh, just, Just joking. But we have a very serious topic that we have uh, our first guest that we're going to talk to in just a moment is the uh, American Association of Christian Counselors leader, 50,000 member organization, uh, Tim Clinton. We'll come to him to give us some global understanding of things. And then somewhere around the second half of this segment, uh, which will come and go real quick, we're going to talk about a practitioner for the Lighthouse Network 
the founder of that network, Dr. Carl Benzio, MD, and both of them are for real doctors, unlike yours truly. But in the newspaper, it's interesting to see the following headline. Suicide of Star Pastor's Son Stirs Debate on Mental Illness. And we've heard all kinds of things come out. And the thing that has been most shocking is that, number one, he struggled with mental illness. And uh, Pastor David, he, it says here that Ed Stetzer makes the comment that we think everything is new and that everything in our hearts and minds should be fixed. But, and Ed is a, a great prominent pastor that's quoted here, but we teach that the mind needs to be renewed. And uh, so just because you got born again doesn't mean that your ideas or your mental health is born again. And so in the final segment of the program today, uh, the two of us are going to talk from a parental, practical, and somewhat of a biblical point of view about how we should be looking at the process of working with our children and uh, our family friends around this issue of developing ourselves emotionally and when to refer folks to the kind of professionals we have on the line. But evidently people tweeted and emailed Rick Warren and said, we're glad. It's almost like, can you imagine somebody going, na 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 your son's dead. I'm happy. Mm, it's like Job's friends. Like Job's friends. And you're saying, and oh, by the way, I say this in the name of the Lord. Mm. And so I'm thinking, now, I don't know who you serve in or where you connect it with what God, but doesn't sound like the Christian God. So... We want to dive in and ask Tim Clinton about how difficult is it for celebrities to get mental health. Tim, dear friend, it is good to have you on the program. How are you today? Good morning, Bishop. Um, I'm doing well. I, I need a little extra coffee. You guys are all early for me. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it in your voice, but you are so energetic. Uh, last time I saw you, I saw you from a distance. You didn't even know. I was there because I saw you rushing across this restaurant at the NRB. And I said, that's my brother, uh, Dr. Tim, on an assignment, <laughs> taking care of business. So Bishop, We like to push I, the go button. And, uh, yeah, let's roll. We got stuff to do. But, Bishop, we're talking about a difficult topic today. And yes. what a tragedy for Pastor Warren and uh, his family. I've always said this, Bishop. Um, uh, we're not hardwired to outlive our kids. So when I think about Pastor Rick and his wife Kay, it's just devastating. And then the circumstances around this, it's a double whammy. So mm -hmm. the ministry of presence, the church just needs to come alongside of dear brothers like this and come on, come on, everybody, you know, shut up. I mean, seriously, when you really think about this stuff, <laughs> what, what in the world are you really? doing talking junk like that? Yeah, we don't understand ministry on that level. But how difficult is it? You and I have worked together on one, at least one high-profile situation where you helped me find help for a celebrity pastor when their life was coming totally unglued. And is it more and more the case that Christian celebrities need to find a safe place for, safe place for ministry. Yeah, Bishop, you know that I spend the majority of my time working with uh, pastors, Christian leaders, and their families, and I spend a lot of time with mm -hmm. high-profile athletes. And you, the pace, the pressure, the pain of modern-day life, forget just them. It's all of us. It's just, it's just coming at us in waves. And when life's not the way it's supposed to be, we all battle with what are we going to do, who do we turn to, and God, are you there? When life's not the way it's supposed to be, it's not a fun place to be. Everybody, every Paul needs a Timothy, and every Timothy needs a Paul. I mean, think about the Apostle Paul for a moment. Late in his life, mm -hmm. what does he say to Timothy? 
would you come and see me? Yeah. You know, it's lonely at the top, Bishop. You know that. And come before winter. You know why? Because it's profitable for me. I need you, son. And every Timothy needs desperately a Paul who's going to pour into them. Those things you have both heard, learned, and seen in me, son, do those things, and the peace of God will be with you. It's though, mm-hmm. Bishop, living in this world, we're lonely, and we're disconnected. I don't care what technology's doing. I've never seen so, many, so much loneliness and aloneness, if you will. Well, wow, you're making a very, very profound, profound point. And uh, honestly, I hadn't really thought about loneliness as being one of the keys. And this would have isolated and is no doubt isolating um, Dr. Warren now. And wow, after his son does what he does, and uh, he now is interacting publicly, are there any keys for other people they're going through their private hurts. How does someone deal with grief? And uh, then I'm going to shift to Dr. Benzio and, and bring you back in just a moment. But how does someone deal with the grief of such a loss and what might be counted a public failure, Dr. Clinton? Well, the very first thing I think is you just, you just have to step back and um, you're in a shock state up front. It's just like total chaos. It's like this, it's surreal. You, you, you can't even believe this is happening to you. And during those moments, I think you just, you press in close, closest to those you love and you want to be with. And at times like this, Bishop, it really is about the ministry of presence. Go back to Job's friends. I heard David joke about that, but they did get something right up front, you all. They came in and what they just sat with Job. Mm. A bunch of days. And the ministry of presence right there, screams about, I'm there for you, I love you, even in this confusing, desperate time. And uh, obviously, as a dad, I can't even imagine what's going through Pastor Warren's mind, but as a dad, I'd be asking a lot of questions about my 